Hello, my lovely hair people. Welcome back. Hair people. That is not a good name. I am sorry for that one. <laughs> Today, I am going to take you on a proper tour of my hair work collection. I've had several of you ask for a more in-depth look at my personal collection, so consider this to be part one of my collection series. Make sure to do the things so you can see future collection videos as they come out. But now, on to today's subject, my hair wreaths. Many people are so fond of hair jewelry, and I can't blame them. Hair jewelry is awesome, but the big, bold, and dramatic hair flowers were my first great hair work love, so they hold a special place very near and dear to my heart. Some of these pieces I'm about to show you may have made cameos in previous videos, but rest assured I am going to share even more details about them, including one of my favorite collection stories ever. So, let's go! Welcome to my kitchen! This is the first stop on our hair wreath tour. As you can see, this wreath is quite tiny, so it needed a tiny piece of wall that it could monopolize without being overpowered. And what better spot to put her than right above my coffee pot, which is not in the frame, but trust me, my coffee pot is literally right here. So a tiny, delicate little hair wreath is the perfect backdrop while I pour my coffee to begin my day. Wreaths that are in oval frames like this are <laughs> nearly impossible to photograph or film without some um, glare on the glass, but I'm gonna try to get some pictures to pop up so you can see her a little better. Although the technique and shape of this wreath is not all that uncommon, what really stuck out to me as special about this piece is, in fact, the oval frame that it's in. Normally, a frame this size and shape would house an ornate piece of palette work, uh, such as a picture of a grave scene or some French-style curls and swoops, but I rather like the aesthetic of a hair wreath under the ovular convex glass. Having less depth than a traditional shadow box, the flowers in a piece like this need to be quite uniform and tiny, so Almost every single flower in here is made using the standard gimp technique, with the exception of a couple of more broad-petaled flowers near the base here. There's a little bit of noticeable damage on this from age, but overall it's not too bad and everything is quite nice and tight. There are a few tiny white and black beads in this wreath, and I think I spot about three different hair colors. There's nothing obvious to state that this is a morning piece, so with that in mind, along with the several different hair colors, this very well may have been a family memento. So with that, let us away to our next wreath. Well, okay, so I guess I said wreath, but this obviously is not in a wreath shape, which is fine. Although wreaths were very common, they were not the only shape that you would see wire work techniques like this displayed in. Sometimes, especially in Scandinavian countries, you would see a shape that was more up and down like a tree of sorts, but common variances like this aside, this one is still a little atypical, which is why I love her so much. This piece is small and simple, but really quite unique. There is one large brunette flower in the center made of the standard gimp technique with two fluffier sprays of blonde hair on the side. Simple enough from a hair work perspective, but what I actually like best about this piece is the fabric lining on the back of the frame. Because of the way that it's ruched, it just kind of reminds me of the inside of a casket, which I think is neat. <laughs> That's not to say that this is necessarily a morning piece either. That's just a personal observation. 
This piece is hung up literally right across from the doorway to my hair room, so I get to see it every time I come in and out of the studio, and it's also right next to my front door. I try to keep as many things that strangers might potentially find unsettling as possible in the front entryway because I like to mess with door-to-door -door salespeople. And now let us move into my parlor so I can show you my two all-time favorites. Here we are. I am sure you recognize this delightfully monstrous dome from my unboxing video. So let me just uh, slip this off so you can see the hair work better. Uh, there we go. Now, I am talking about these two pieces for a very special reason, and that is they were made by the same artist. Let's start with this wreath. Obviously, it is no longer in its original frame, and unfortunately, I have yet to find a suitable replacement for it, but I want you to just look at this stunning craftsmanship. Although there is quite a bit of the standard gimp technique in the background flowers of the wreath, it is clear that the focus is actually these larger, broad petaled flowers that have a little bit of center beadwork for emphasis. Unlike with some hair wreaths, it is very clear that the artist very carefully thought out the concept before beginning and paid very careful attention to keeping everything symmetrical and balanced. These spirals all around the wreath are actually not made out of hair, but they are a beautiful addition to the overall aesthetic. Considering how perfectly put together and symmetrical this is, it is not outside of the realm of possibility that this may have been made as an artistic piece as opposed to something mourning or familial. There's, of course, no way to be sure, but you can even see that the color of the flowers is very well balanced with the lighter shades of hair in opposite quadrants. This is something that could be very difficult to pull off in a wreath this size, unless, of course, you had complete control over how much hair you had and what colors you had, which is just not always feasible in a custom order. Whether this means that this was solely made for art's sake, or if this was a professional hair worker who made some display pieces as examples of what she could do, I don't know, but it is certainly fun to speculate. Our mystery hair artist here also made this spectacular pot of hair flowers. When I first saw this, I thought it was just the most unique piece that I had ever seen. I've always had a very special fondness for domed pieces of hair work, but my gosh, I had absolutely never seen one that came in the form of potted hair flowers. That is, until I found several of them, all by the same artist. I purchased these items from my friend and prominent oddities collector, Evan Michelson, and she bought the wreath and potted hair flowers together from the same source. She kept one pot for herself and sold me this one, and then there was also a third pot that was maybe half the size of this one that was sold to another collector. Aside from the fact that these items were purchased together, there are other ways that you can tell that they were made by the same hand. For example, if you compare the leaves on this pot of hair flowers with the background gimp of the wreath, they look nearly identical. And they also use exactly the same turquoise and clear beads in both pieces. Also, the spirals from the wreath, which I mentioned earlier, are exactly like the spiral that circles the perimeter of the base here. Just for clarity's sake, the pot itself is actually silk and not hair, although each of the leaves and flowers are made of hair. 
The fabric base is actually not solid. It is just fabric and whoop, sitting on a mason jar. Now, let me tell you my absolute favorite story about a sister piece that I totally just stumbled upon. Three years ago, after I had acquired these two pieces, I traveled to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where the Kemmerer Museum was putting on a temporary hair art exhibit. Admittedly, there are very few permanent displays of hair work collections in the U.S., but these temporary exhibits do come and go from time to time. This particular exhibit was entitled Hair Work, Relics of Remembrance, and all of the items were on loan from a private collector named Pamela Moschini. Pamela's collection is massive and immaculate. I spent literally the entire day from opening until close studying all of the pieces, but one dome in particular had me doing a double take because what did I see but another pot of hair flowers. I got so excited because I was certain that this piece was, again, made by the same artist, and it was the only one I was aware of that was not all purchased from the same source the year earlier. When I first saw that pot of hair flowers, it was tucked away in a glass case in the far corner of one of the rooms, so I quite literally got down on my knees with a flashlight trying to pick out other distinctive details that might confirm my theory. After speaking with the curator, we reached out to the collector and with her permission, we were able to actually take that dome out of the glass case and into a back room for further inspection. In the back of the dome, the side which was facing a wall was none other than an exact copy of one of the large broad petaled flowers from my hair wreath. To say I got shivers would be an understatement. The one very tragic thing about hair work is that much like any fancy work that was predominantly deemed a women's craft, the names of a strong majority of these very talented artisans have been lost to history. Neither I, nor Evan, nor Pamela know who made these gorgeous pieces that have so utterly captured our collective imaginations. I secretly hope that one day my research will lead me to an answer, but until then I'll just need to keep fantasizing about these anonymous heroines and admiring the beauty that they've contributed to this world and my home. If you want to help me on my mission to uncover these secrets while getting access to bonus travel vlogs with some of my research journeys, please consider joining my Patreon community along with all of these phenomenal humans. And that's it. Those are all of the Harrys that I own to date. Although they are my only hair wreaths, they are not my only pieces of hair work in general. So please do the things so you can be alerted to my future collection videos when they come out. Please tell me in the comments which of these pieces were your favorite and why, because I know the things that I love and look for in hair work, but I'm always eager to see what other people enjoy the most. And until next time, stay weird.